Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw With Rob. With me, Rob Bidoff. And this is a picture of me on the back of the brand new Draw With Rob activity book, which is out this week, is out on the 9th of July 2020. So if you like these videos, I think you'll really like this book. It's full of cool things to do. Some of the draw alongs you might have seen, look, you can get a certificate at the end. And lots of bits and bobs for you to do. Look, here we go. You can make your own imaginary friend using these little elements here that I've made for you. And what's really good about it, I don't know if you can see, but can you see all the edges of the pages are perforated? So once you've done your drawing on this special paper that's really easy to draw on, you can tear it out, stick it up on the wall. So it's really cool. Loads of stuff for you to do. Finish off bits of my drawings here. Look, what kind of creature is Eddie holding? You have to draw what you think he's holding. And there's puzzles, all sorts of really fun stuff. So check it out if you like these videos. Now, maybe you've seen some of my other books. This was my very first one. This is called Blown Away. Uh, and this one won the Waterstones Prize. I'm very proud of that. But it's all about this penguin here who goes out flying his kite on a windy day. Maybe you've seen this one. It's called Odd Dog Out. It's all about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with the other sausage dogs. But as per usual, we are here today to do a drawing together. Now then, there's something very cool happening this week. It started yesterday, actually. Do you know who Cressida Cowell is? Well, she is the ch current children's laureate, actually, but she is also a very, very famous author and illustrator. Maybe you have read the How to Train Your Dragon books. Well, she wrote them and she illustrated them too. And her latest series is called The Wizard of Once, which is fantastic, it's really good fun. We, in my household, she's very famous because she wrote a picture book that we read to my oldest daughter, who's, she's in her 20s now, but she, uh, Cressida wrote a book called Don't Do That Kitty Kilroy that we absolutely loved. I'll see if I can find a picture of it to put up on the screen now. We loved it so much that actually we called my second daughter, my middle daughter, we called her Kitty. Um, so that's how much we really liked Cressida. Anyway, she is doing this thing, it's called Cressida Cow's Summer Camp. And she's, she's basically, she's putting together lots and lots of activities and things for you guys to do while you're at home over the summer. Lots of activities, drawing and reading, all kind of book reading and creativity focused. And I think it's just a really, really great thing to keep you entertained and keep you learning. It's gonna be good for your mental health as well, just to keep you stimulated when you might not be able to do the things that you usually do. And it's great for parents and carers as well. So I'm really, really pleased that this video is gonna be part of her summer camp. So I thought to myself, right, what can I draw? I need to draw something that's quite summery. And I was trying to think of which animals felt quite summery. And for some reason, a flamingo kept popping into my head. I just, maybe it's something to do with their coloring, I don't know, but they just seem like quite a summery animal. So I thought today we would draw a nice, Flamingo. Does that sound like a good plan? Okay, so this is what you're gonna need. A piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, something to draw with, maybe something to color with later on. If you haven't got any colored pencils, don't you worry, you can just do some shading with your pencil or your pen. But if you have got some colored pencils, fantastic. Right, now I need to tell you how these videos work, don't I? Just in case you haven't seen them before. Now, Lots of people say they don't think they're very good at drawing. I say, you know what, everybody can draw. You just might need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. So that's where I come in. So this is how it works. I do a little bit of drawing on my piece of paper here. You then pause your video and you copy what I do, which is just a little tiny bit of the drawing. Then you can start the video up again. I'll do a little bit more, then you draw. Then I draw, then you draw, I draw, you draw. And by the end, you'll be very amazed at the picture you end up with. So we just break it down into little bite-sized pieces, don't we? Okay, so now our flamingo is gonna be, we're gonna be mainly be using the sort of central area of our piece of paper here. So you might want to turn your piece of paper that way up. I'm not going to because it wouldn't fit on the screen, would it, if I did that? So I'm gonna keep mine this way up, but I'm just gonna use the middle of my piece of paper. And we are going to start slightly, slightly above center of our piece of paper, we are gonna start with a nice, smooth S shape, like that, okay? So a nice, simple start. Smooth S shaped curve. Then, from the top of our curve, we're gonna come around like this, and we're gonna go back to about there. So we're gonna leave a little gap 
between where we finished our line and the line that we drew when we started off. Then, from the bottom of here, we're gonna follow our S-shaped curve back around. And we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go a little way past where we started, to about there, okay? Can you tell which bit of our flamingo this is gonna be? That's right, flamingo's curvy neck and head. That's where we started. Okay, now let's go back to the point where we, we started the drawing here, so the bottom of our S shape. What I want you to do, I want you to keep going along, but we're gonna curve upwards and we're gonna do a sort of bump, like that. Okay, that's gonna be our flamingo's back. Then we're gonna carry that on a bit and we're gonna draw the tail feathers. So this is how we do that. We go, we, we carry the curve on a little bit, sort of slightly going upwards. And then we're gonna go back in, out, in, out, and then in. So we're gonna do three sort of little pointy bits at the back of our flamingo like that. Now you might think I'm just gonna join that up, but actually I'm not because we need to draw our flamingo's legs in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep going on with that line and we're just gonna curve down a little tiny way like that. So just a little tiny downward slope. And we're gonna draw a little line along and then we're gonna go back up and then we're gonna join it up like that. So we've just drawn the top of one of our flamingo's legs. Now then, what are flamingos famous for? Well, I would say they're mainly famous for two things. The first thing is they're lovely in pink, aren't they? We'll talk about why they're pink a bit later on. But the other thing is they often stand on one leg, don't they, flamingos? I think they sleep on one leg, actually. It's a very odd thing to do. I've always thought that. I wonder why that is. I'm not sure. If anybody knows why they stand and sleep on one leg, you can, you can write in the comments and you can let me know. So we are going to draw our flamingo standing on one leg. Now there's a very good reason why our flamingo is standing on one leg. That will all become clear a bit later on, but let's draw the legs first, shall we? So this is what we're gonna do. From this little lump that we've drawn here, which is the top of the leg, we're just gonna draw two straight lines coming down like that. It's a very slight angle, okay? Then at the ends of those lines, we're gonna draw a little circle like that. Then from that circle, we are going to draw another line that comes out, goes very slightly uphill, actually, just so it goes to about level with this area of the neck here. And then we're gonna do another line next to it. About, we're keeping the distance, that sort of distance, we're gonna keep the same distance between the lines as we did there, like that. And this bit is basically our flamingo's knee. Their knees, they bend the other way to our knees, but um, this is almost like, I mean, it's a very simplified version because that's what we do when we do these sort of little cartoon versions, but this is like sort of like the hinge, <laughs> for want of a better word, in the flamingo's leg. Then, at the end of the leg here, we are gonna draw three sort of toes, claws. What do you call them? Claws? I suppose they're claws, aren't they? A bird. Just like that. Okay, so the leg is bent and going upwards. Okay, now we need to draw the other leg, and the other leg is gonna go is gonna be going behind this first bent leg, but first of all we need to do the little lumpy bit. So this time we're gonna do the lump, just sort of next to it, about the same size if you can, like that. And then coming from there, we're gonna do the two little lines again, and they're gonna go through that leg just a little tiny way and then we're gonna draw another one of these little circles, like that. And do you remember I said they stand on one leg, so this leg needs to be going straight down. It's not, well actually, it doesn't go just straight. They always have a very slight bend, and it's the other way, as I said, it's the other way to our knees. Our knees would bend like that, wouldn't they? But they sort of bend like that. So we're gonna carry the leg down, but at a very slight angle. And this lovely long leg. It's gonna go down to about there, okay? So draw the other line, remember keeping the distance roughly the same. But you know what, we're not gonna draw the foot because our flamingo is going to be standing in a lovely, cool 
body of water, so a pond or something like that, or a lake. So this is how we're gonna draw the point we're at. This is gonna, I'm gonna show you a quite clever technique here about how to make it look like somebody is standing in water. At the bottom of the leg, what I want you to do is just sort of a little tiny curved line, like that. And that's gonna be where the point where the leg enters the water. And then, you know what, I'm just gonna change my pen. I'm gonna grab my thinner Kurosaki pen here. And I'm just going to draw just a few little semicircles like that, sort of slightly differing in size, just coming out from where the leg goes into the water. And it sort of looks like ripples in the water, you see. Isn't that clever? It really makes it look like it's the foot is going into some water. And I've really, there's only just a few little marks that have created that little illusion. And when we come to colouring in, I'm going to show you something else that we can do down there, which really makes it look, look like our flamingo is standing in water. Okay, right. Let's go up to our flamingo's face now. I'm going to keep my thin pen, I think, for this bit. Let's give our flamingo a beak now. They have these sort of bent beaks. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to my first pen. I've changed my mind. I'm changing my mind left, right and centre today, aren't I? What we're going to do, coming out of our flamingo's head here, I want you to draw a diagonal line towards the sort of the top half of our head, like that. Roughly a centimetre long, maybe slightly more than a centimetre long. And then at that point, I want you to change the angle and we're just going to start heading downwards. They've got quite big beaks, so you can make it quite long, like that. Then here we're going to turn around and we're going to head off back uphill at a slightly different angle like that. I'm going to make it a bit pointier actually. It's a good thing about these pens and making these lines quite thick. You can sort of change the shape within the line if you see what I mean. So I'm just going to make it a little bit pointier and I'm going to go up to similar up to the point the, the sort of the, the, the point where we change direction there. We're going to do the same on the bottom. We're going to change direction again and we're going to join back up with the head. So it's this sort of bendy beak. And what I want you to do is the end, about halfway down this, the, the point where it's bent, I want you just to draw a little line across and then we're going to colour that bit in because they have these sort of black tips to their beaks. Now I'm going to get back to my thin pen. Because we want to make our flamingo a cheery flamingo, so I thought I'd add a little bit of a smile in here, just like that. Just a little curvy line, continuing on similar angle to that. Continuing on, I'm just curving up. And it makes our flamingo a little bit smiley. Okay, shall we wake him or her up now? Let's give them an eye, shall we? I think my flamingo is a girl, this flamingo. What we're gonna do is quite a big eye, I think, like that. A nice big circle. Similar height, maybe, to the beak. Like that. And then, I think I've definitely told you this before, but I'm not going to do the pupil. I want, the, I want our flamingo to be looking at us, but I'm not going to do her pupil right in the middle of her eye. I'm just going to do it slightly off to the left-hand side, and that will make it look like she is looking straight at us. You see? Like that. And we're going to give her some lovely, elegant eyelashes. One, two, three. Going to a nice point at the end, like that. Lovely. And because she's happy, we're going to add a little eyebrow. A little raised eyebrow above her eye, like that, to make her look nice and happy. Now then, have you noticed there's lots of threes involved in this picture? What are you talking about, Rob? I can hear you saying it. I can hear you asking what I'm talking about. Right. Well, you see we just drew three eyelashes. We've done three tail feathers there and three little claws on the end, little toes, claw things on the end of her foot. We are also going to add three little tufts to her hair, to her head like that. So one, two, three. There we go. Lots of people say that three is the magic number, don't they? And things always look good in threes, I think. I've got three children, for example, but only one dog. I don't want to get another dog. Somebody was asking me yesterday, they said, why don't you get another dog? And I said, well, Ringo is more than enough for me. A little monkey. 
<laughs> right, so there we go. That's pretty good. We're nearly there now with our flamingo. I know, we're gonna add a few little details here because her wings are sort of tucked back here. So what we're gonna do is just gonna add a sort of semicircle there, another one just above there, and then maybe one more. Just a suggestion that her wings are tucked back up there into her body. Now then, do you remember I said there was a reason that our flamingo in particular is standing on one leg? Well, that reason is she is holding something with this leg here. And what could be more summery than a lovely ice cream cone? So what I want you to do is we're gonna do a sort of upside down triangle there and imagine that line continues out there and then continues out there, like that, okay? So it's basically an upside down triangle, but we just make it go behind the, the, the claw. I really wish I knew what the feet were called. I think it's a claw, bird's claws. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, now at the top of that triangle, I want you to draw a narrow oblong, the sort of rounded at each end, like that, okay? And that's gonna be the top of our ice cream cone. Now we need to draw the actual ice cream itself. So what we're gonna do is basically, actually we wanna, I think we should, she should have a little flake sticking out of her ice cream. Let's do that first, shall we? So about here, maybe half a centimeter up from the end of the cone, I want you to just draw a little wobbly line like that and then a rectangle going straight up our page like that. And that is gonna be the little flake that's sticking out the top of her ice cream. And then around that, we're gonna just draw a nice simple circle like that. And that's gonna be the ice cream. Okay, then what we're gonna do, when we color in our ice cream cone, we're gonna add a sort of crisscross pattern to our cone. I'm not gonna do it with my black pen because I want to do it with, I think if I color this in a sort of yellowy browny color, light yellowy browny, I'll add my crisscrosses in with a darker brown, just so it's a little bit more subtle, the coloring. Speaking of coloring, I think we finished all the line parts of our drawing now, so we do need to do a bit of coloring. Remember, if you don't have colors, you can just shade it with your pencil. That would still be really lovely. You can see the way I'm gonna shade. It's gonna be a bit darker. The bits, like the rear leg there, would be colored in slightly darker than the front one, just to make it look like it's sort of fading into the distance a bit. But if you have got colors, I think it would be lovely. This is a great opportunity to do, to do a lovely, colorful drawing. Now. Do you remember I said flamingos are pink? Do you know why they're pink? It's all to do with the food that they eat. They eat a lot of sort of algae from the water, but they eat a lot of shrimps, things like that, things that are actually pink in color. And that's what colors their feathers pink. So I think, fine, if you want to draw a pink flamingo, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do mine lovely in pink because I think it's a really beautiful summery color. But if you want to do a different colored flamingo, maybe your flamingo likes to eat spinach. So, so they're bright green. Maybe they're a big fan of bananas. So they're bright yellow. Maybe they eat, I don't know, things <laughs> rainbow colored. Maybe they like to eat, you know, Skittles, sweets, something like that, so they're rainbow colored. I don't know, whatever you want to do, you can do. You know I like to see lots of multicolored drawings. But even if I get loads and loads of pink flamingos, I think that will still look lovely on the grid. So. As per usual, I'm gonna go into my super speed mode and do my coloring, and then I'm gonna to talk to you a bit when we get back and I'll show you. Do you remember I said I've got a very clever little trick for down here to make it look like the water, and I'll show you that in 30 seconds or a minute or so, however long it takes us to color. So, if you're ready, gang, let's go, shall we? Three, two, one, go! Okay, so there is my coloured in flamingo. Got mine lovely and pink. I've added a bit of shading here and there just to make it, just add a little bit of depth to it. Nice yellow legs. Do you see what I mean about making this leg here that's behind the front leg slightly darker in those areas? I wonder what flavour ice cream you've given your flamingo. I've gone for strawberry. I want it to match it to her feathers. 
there we go and there's those crisscrosses that I talked about now then do you remember I said I was going to add a little bit of coloring to the water area here now the first thing we're going to do I'm just going to add a bit of blue just around those ripples like that and maybe even add a couple of extra ones just in the blue like that just to add maybe coloring just slightly behind just to add a suggestion of water like that but then the really cool thing is this whatever color legs you've colored your flamingo in if you just add a bit of that color sort of in a scribble just going down and fading out like a mirror image so if the angle is slightly like that of the leg the angle of the, of the reflection has to be the opposite like that so I'm just gonna add just a little suggestion in a sort of wobbly line like that of the leg can you see and you know what I might even add I'm gonna use my black pencil here I'm just gonna add because we've got a bit of outline on our leg I'm just gonna add a little suggestion of black in a wobble like that I've left a very slight gap there but can you see it makes it look like there's a there's um a reflection in the water where our flamingo is standing so there we go get a bit rid of a bit of that pencil like that there's our finished flamingo I hope yours I hope you're pleased with your drawing I'm sure you are the last thing that we have to do as per usual we have to sign our drawing so I'm gonna do mine down here oh, there we go so what I want you to do is I want you to take a picture or get somebody to take a picture of your drawing and then you can post it on social media using the hashtag draw with Rob that way hopefully I'll get to see it although we do get sent thousands and thousands of drawings but I do really try and and see everybody's if I can if you're watching this video on Facebook you can just add your drawing in the comments below um, but I really hope you've enjoyed doing this and don't forget to go to Cressida the Cow's summer camp page I'm going to put the address up on screen where should I put it I'm going to put it just here I think there we go so go to that website check it out there's loads and loads of things for you to do and it will keep you busy not just this week but throughout the summer holidays so I think you're going to really really enjoy that thank you for watching and drawing along with me today I hope you've had fun um, and I can't wait to see all your lovely summery flamingos in the meantime until we meet again take care of yourselves and I'll see you all again very soon bye everyone